Hey guys, this is Awesome John 22 coming at you today with another review. Today we are taking a look at the uh, the entire toy lines, effectively, of the uh, 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the 2014 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by looking at the uh, four title characters from each line and uh, versus them against each other to see which kind of is better representative of their franchise or their specific place in the franchise rather and determining in that way which is the better toy line uh, it's the biggest verse that review I've ever done and I'm kind of excited about it it's also the first time that I've ever actually sat down and really thought about what I wanted to say in a review ahead of time I always come up with a few bullet points but this time I really gave it some extra thought because I want to make clear right now right away that this review is not a review of the two individual iterations of the franchise this is not a review of the 2012 cartoon versus the new movie I will not be determining which one is more viable as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which one better represents the franchise because as far as I'm concerned and Feel free to disagree with me vehemently in the comments, so long as you comment about it. Uh, that every iteration of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is just as valid as every other one. Because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are a franchise that is synonymous with revision. Every single version has been so different than past versions that it's hardly the same franchise. And... It's for that reason that I don't hate the new movie. I actually really enjoyed it when I went to see it last night. It was different, certainly, but so was the 2003 animated series. So was the 1987 animated series from the Mirage comics. It was just... It was just different. It wasn't invalid. It was just different. And that's why when it really comes down to it, I really do like the new figures from the new line and see them as just as valid rep a representation of the Turtles as their 2012 counterparts to today. We are going to actually, despite my flair for melodrama, keep things very simple by looking at these characters in the categories of detail and paint, articulation, and finally the uh, possible game-breaking category of which one is more accurate to its own franchise. Let's start things off by taking a look at the 2012 Turtles in the first category, paint and detail. Uh, looking at them all together for the first time, they really do look good together. They really look like they could have just jumped right off of your TV screen. They are, um, they're, they're pretty, pretty dead on how, how you would expect them to appear based on the cartoon. Um, already coloring my opinions of future categories. Uh, however, I do have a couple of issues with these figures. Despite the fact that they are very, very nice, they're very sparse on paint details. And as I said in their individual reviews, that is pretty in keeping with the style of the show. It's just, for, for whatever reason, I can't help but feel that they could have done more. I, 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 whether it be painting the stitching on their belts or simply painting their belts, you know, more rich colors. In the terms of Donatello here, for example, he has this harness, and while the buckle is painted, he has some cross stitching that is not zooming in on it. Also, his entire harness is made of this dull brown plastic that I feel could look a lot better. Also, with as sparse as paint is on this, these figures, I really, I really wish they could have um, spared some money in their budget to paint the weapons. Even if it was just painting some brown or some silver on Michelangelo's nunchucks if they didn't feel they could do both. Or painting the wraps here on Donatello's bow staff, maybe the same color as his hand wraps here. 
it just feels like they they skimped in a couple places where they didn't necessarily need to. There's I don't feel that there's enough paint on these figures to justify cutting back on paint applications anywhere. Maybe it's Playmates policy to leave the weapons unpainted. In fact, I can't remember a single Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figure over the years that had painted weapons. But it still leaves a bit of a sour taste in my mouth because it feels like they weren't even cutting corners. They just reached a certain point, said, hey, I don't think the the collectors will expect us to do anything more, so let's stop. And it kind of bums me out a little bit. Despite so, despite the fact that they look very, very good together, I um, am already a little negatively colored in regards to these figures in this category. <laughs> so you can probably see where this is going to go. Still, I'm going to put you through it because I'm just that kind of guy. Moving next to the movie figures, there is paint galore on these guys. It is just everywhere. And yes, I'm pointing out in their individual reviews that there are some areas where they should be painted and aren't. Such as the laces on Leonardo's thighs. The silver chain over here on Michelangelo's arm. Or the really cool techno blue that is present in the original test shots of Donatello on these uh, battle skirts that isn't present here. But there's just so much more paint on these guys all over the place that I am still forgiving of that because there's always something interesting to look at on these figures. Part of that is just the overall greater detail present here. But a big part of it is the paint applications, which are actually quite good. I'm not saying that Playmates is bad at painting their figures by any stretch, but quality control issues are a thing nowadays. And I did buy these figures in a 4-pack. You would expect there to be at least a few quality control issues in a 4-pack, and yet I found few, if any. I'm actually <laughs> looking at these figures again, trying to see if I missed any that I haven't already pointed out at one point or another and I don't see any. The paint on these guys is pretty spot on and while there are a couple spots that I wish were uh, painted better uh, being ones that I already pointed out a moment ago I, I still really enjoy the look of these guys. I think they look fantastic and while I really like the 2012 designs I want to make that absolutely clear. These guys are just more interesting. And it is, of course, proof that Playmates doesn't always go minimalistic in terms of their color and detailing. However, once again, if there is anything to complain about on these figures, I think it's the lack of paint on their weapons. As I mentioned earlier, I don't remember Playmates ever painting the Turtles' weapons before, but I still think it would have been nice, especially on Raphael's size, the guard or the grips being painted red, or the same uh, except blue on Leonardo's swords, or maybe just some detailing on Donatello's extendable bow staff. After seeing the movie, that thing has a lot of detail on it that is well molded here, but really could do to be painted in. Overall, though, I think I have to give the category of paint and detailing to the 2014 movie figures. As much as I love the 2012 figures and their designs, there is just no arguing that these figures have more paint and detail and therefore win the category. Which brings us, of course, to the question of articulation which line has the better articulation. And Playmates, again, is pretty standard in terms of the articulation, but, but we're not going to assume anything today because, of course, to assume simply makes an ass out of you and me. What we are going to do, in fact, is we're going to take an extra look at both of these figures and uh, get a feel for their articulation all over again and decide from there. So first we're going to take a look at movie Leonardo here, bringing him up close. He does a good 360 rotation at the shoulder, and he's totally going to drop that sword, so I'm going to move it. He can uh, lift his arm up about yay high, 
and he can bend 90 degrees at the arm, pretty much exactly 90 degrees. His head can rotate, though the rotation is a bit underwhelming because it mostly just spins his head around in that weird angle. And uh, his legs can um, move forward about that far and back, actually just a little bit further. And they can rotate like so, giving them some additional range of movement. They rotate below the knee, uh, just as the arms rotate below the elbow. And the knees do bend uh, ever so slightly. And that is it for the articulation of the movie figures. Their articulation is all completely standard. In fact, Leonardo is actually probably the, one of the better of them as he has a smaller shell and smaller arms, meaning that his movements are less hampered than someone, say, Raphael, who <laughs> really only has a couple of useful poses that you can get him into, despite the fact that he's my favorite figure from the line. Moving into Leonardo, kind of taking him off to the side, bringing this guy up close. Starting in the legs this time, we can see a much greater range of movement uh, in and out, forward and back. In fact, his front shell uh, is actually made of a soft rubbery plastic, allowing his leg more forward movement. Very, very nice. His arms can go up about the AFAR and all the way down as well, and they move in all of the same places as the movie figure. The only difference being that his arms can't quite reach 90 degrees. Uh, his knees bend a little less than 90 degrees. He uh, rotates in the same spots in the legs. His head rotates normally, and all of this would be enough to win the 2012 characters, they, this category, and then they also have wrist articulation. These guys are ninjas. They need to be able to rotate their wrists. It's just, it's just a fact. So, not surprisingly, if you uh, follow my Versus reviews and pick up on the pattern, the 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures win the second category articulation pretty much as soundly as the movie figures won the first category, making the third category the game-winning category. So moving on to the third category, which will mostly include a lot of me talking, uh, we're going to take a look at which of the figures better represent their own uh, little portion of the franchise uh, in terms of the accuracy to their on-screen counterparts and uh, both both do a very good job let me say that uh, first and foremost they're both very very good in terms of their accuracy each of these lines are having seen the new movie uh, which incidentally is why this review had to come today and not before today I have a much better sense of these new turtles and their environment and uh, how they're going to be represented as the new movie franchise goes forward. And uh, I've mentioned several times now that the 2012 toy line started out pretty inaccurate but got so much better with the second releases of the characters. Looking at these guys, they do look a lot like their on-screen counterparts. They they just they're great they're great figures they look more like their on-screen counterparts than the 1987 figures did if you uh want to get really technical about it but there are still some really odd differences looking at just the 2012 figures there's um there's a few that are pretty noticeable first of all of course, none of the weapons are painted, so they don't look quite like their on-screen counterparts. Also, and I appreciate the attempt to differentiate the turtles more than they would be otherwise, there's a greater variety of color here, going from one character to the next, than uh, 
than there is on screen. Turning them around is pretty obvious that there are no two shells here that are exactly the same color. Donnie and Mikey are pretty close. Leo is pretty close to Donnie, but Raph, his shell is much, much darker. And uh, I don't dislike it, don't get me wrong, but I don't remember their shells being all different shades of green in the cartoon. There's also pretty noticeably a greater differentiation in terms of skin color. And again, while I don't personally mind it myself, it causes some problems. I'm going to cite Donnie again with his uh, pale brown belt harness thing uh, and unpainted staff. His skin's also this kind of pale olive green that it isn't in the, in the series. It's actually a lot more vibrant than this, and I think it does him an injustice painting him such an uninteresting and bland color. So, while there are uh, there are positives certainly to this line, especially this wave of this line that is far more accurate in terms of design, most of all, uh, there are still certainly some pretty severe problems that uh, that I don't feel like I need to dwell on any longer. Though it should be noted that, despite the problems, the figures still look very good, and they look very good together. Moving once again to the 2014 movie figures, again, they also look very, very good together. And like the 2012 figures, they are also very accurate to their on-screen counterparts. In fact, it's almost surprising how accurate they can be considering how unusual these designs were. Let's cite Donnie again for an example. Um, looking at his bow, they did a really good job of making it look like an extendable weapon, like it is portrayed in the in the uh, movie. And it's totally falling out of his hands right now, so you'll excuse me for a moment. There we go. And it looks good. It is unpainted, just as with the 2012 figures, and just as I mentioned before, all of their weapons are completely unpainted, though the molding is very, very nice, and they could have gone with something a lot more simple and pulled it off, and they didn't, and I appreciate that. There's also all kinds of details in the skin, making them look like they could have walked right off the screen. Yes, they look like toys, but so do the 2012 figures. And despite the fact that they look like toys, they also look like the Turtles characters that they are meant to represent. The only th thing I kind of wish were included on Donnie specifically is his eyeglasses that he wears in the movie. They looked they looked pretty cool. I was actually a little surprised by that, but they did. Now, looking at all of them together, as I mentioned, they do look really cool together, uh, really dynamic. You will notice, though, that I have removed Michelangelo's three-part staff from his right hand where I usually keep it. And that is because after seeing the movie, I can say with absolute certainty that including that weapon with him was absolute crap because he does not use it once in the movie. And while I appreciate them giving the turtles extra weapons sometimes, why couldn't they have given him another nunchuck? Or if they wanted to give him an extra accessory other than a second nunchuck for whatever reason, give him his really cool rocket skateboard that he uses all over the place in the movie and was absolutely freaking amazing. I thought it was just going to be like kind of a, a one-off gag based on the trailers, you know, referencing the show, but no, he uses this thing all the time and it's really cool and it's really effective. Why not give him something that looks like that? Why couldn't they give us that? It, was, it would have been really cool. But no, um, I mentioned missing paint applications such as the paint on his chain there on his arm the missing paint on uh, Donatello's battle skirt things. And uh, again, I have to deduct a couple points from that despite the fact that it, it still doesn't look bad. So, uh, so far, these guys are actually pretty even in terms of uh, scoring with their 2012 counterparts. So I'm, I'm going to have to think of something else to say. Hmm. What other issues do I have with these guys? Well, they are all kind of hunched over, but they were kind of hunched over in the movie, too. Their shells are really heavy in this continuity, so they uh, they don't really stand up as straight. What else is there that's a little weird? It could be an inaccuracy. Hmm. 
Well, they're all wearing radically different clothing from each other, but they do that in the movie too. So that's pretty accurate. Um, they didn't have color to their eyes in uh, the original release of the figures, but eh, I can't really hold that against them because it looks like the original test shots were going to give them eye color, and then for whatever reason they changed their mind. Um, what? I don't know. I can't think of anything else to deduct these guys on. This might be a first, and I really hate to do it, but I think I think these guys are just as accurate to their on-screen counterparts as the 2012 figures are. So, a little surprisingly, I mean, to you, hopefully, not to me, I wrote the review, these guys actually come out in a tie. Neither line, at least not in this current iteration of the line, does a better job than the other of representing its uh, respective continuity. And they're both perfectly valid representations of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which kind of harkens back to what I was saying before. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a franchise that is consistently redesigning and reimagining itself. Yeah, something I really respect it for and something I really like because it keeps it fresh. And, uh... I'm just going to come right out and say it. Fans who don't understand that and get picky, I don't really see them as fans of the franchise. Because saying that you're a fan of the franchise and then whining when it reinvents itself is contradictory. So these two toy lines tie. They are just as good as each other. Just as, I'm going to come right out and say it, the cartoon is just as valid as the movie, and the movie is just as good as the cartoon, in its own way. And, uh, that's really all I have to say about that. Uh, if you enjoyed the review, and I really hope you did, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. If you'd like to know my opinion on the new movie, check out my blog where I have a full review posted. The link to my blog is in the description down below as well as a link to my Twitter and my collections video. Check out that collections video and if you see anything in it you'd like me to review, let me know and I will see what I can do. This has been Awesome John 22 Please don't hate me too much and I will talk to you guys later.